Welcome back to the show. I'm Faitine. And I'm Dave. Today we are talking about the 2019 federal election with me, Faitine. And me, Dave. I was a, a missionary in Liberia and my whole job was just to save starving kids. This question popped into my head and it was, why do I have a job? And the obvious hit me that there were people in positions of influence who didn't have compassion in their heart and didn't have godliness in their heart. It's election time. What are the things that have popped out to you that go, these are the critical issues that we need to be focusing on in our country? Instinctively, I default to the social justice issues. But the one that really rocked me, the federal debt. $80 million a day to the federal debt. What? You know, what could we do with $80 million a day for yeah. the poor? Fiscal stewardship of our nation is actually a justice issue. If people who have traditional values don't get involved now, we might not have an opportunity to get involved. The voice of traditional values is being crushed. And so this is the moment where we need to get involved. As David Maines said to me once, the nation goes to those who show up. It's a critical election, which is why I wanted to do this show. Well, today we are mixing things up a bit. In studio with me is my dear friend, Dave Carroll. He has worked with media for years as a pastor and is super involved in the political sphere in his hometown of Brantford. Yeah, today I am here to steal Fateen's thunder. We are going to put her on the hot seat as today's guest. So many of you know Fateen because she hosts this show. But what you might not know is that she has been a nonprofit advocacy worker since 1997 and for the last 15 years has been devoting a huge slice of her life to equipping Christians to impact the government on the issues that they care about. Yeah, I've become a little bit of a political geek, but perhaps like some of you, I didn't actually start that way. You know, growing up, I rarely voted. I barely paid attention to this stuff. And it wasn't really until I began in nonprofit advocacy work that I began to see firsthand how good government can really impact the lives of people for the better or vice versa. And that's when I really began to see the importance of all this stuff. Well, Faitine, you've come a long way. And right now we are in an election year and it's a big one. There are so many issues on the table and let's face it, people are concerned and they're concerned uh, about a variety of different issues like freedom of religion, the federal debt, First Nations issues, pipelines, abortion, the environment, and really we could go on and on. And with the election just around the corner, a lot of people want to take a stand for our nation's future, but beyond voting, they may not know what they can do or if they can really make any difference at all, but you know better than that, don't you? Yeah, you know, I've seen it time and time again. It's the people that get involved practically who are truly the game changers. So you and your team have been doing research and creating resources to help us all get involved in impactful ways. And I know you're going to want to hear about what Fateen has to share. And I hope you're going to stay with us for the entire show because not only is this going to be informative, but it's going to be a lot of fun too to have Fateen in the hot seat. So let's get to it. Canada is great because all throughout our history, people of the Christian faith have been involved in founding, building, and shaping her. Canada will continue to be great as people of faith continue to be involved. Hey, welcome to the Fate Teen Show. I'm not Fate Teen. My name's Dave Carroll, and it is a pleasure to be able to put my friend Fate Teen on the hot seat. When you called me and said, hey, I want to be on my own show, I thought, this is going to be a blast. <laughs> so Fate Teen's got so many interesting things uh, to be able to talk about, and this is such an important time. It's election time. And uh, Fate Teen and I have something in common. We both spent time uh, in West Africa, mm -hmm. and it changes somebody, doesn't it, being, being in Africa? It's, uh, it opens a whole lot of eyes and a whole lot of doors, and for you, this was the beginning of your journey on how do you make real tangible impact, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I actually had a defining moment. And first of all, thank you so much, Dave, for, <laughs> for being here. And uh, this is such a critical time for our nation. And so I appreciate you and all the and being able to have this conversation today. Um, but yeah, when I was in Liberia, I was a, a missionary in Liberia, and my whole job was just to save starving kids. You know, I just go out through the villages throughout in the days and sometimes in the nights, and and just find kids that literally, if somebody didn't scoop them up and give them some food and give them some medicine, they would probably be dead within 
within 24 or 48 hours. And I'll never forget, I had a defining moment one night, because I'm a night person, <laughs> so one night I was in <laughs> prayer. And um, I was thinking actually about Psalm 72, you know, and of course we know over the Parliament of Canada, Psalm 72 verse 8 is inscribed that um, he will have dominion from sea to sea and the river to the ends of the earth. And if you look at Psalm 72, Dave, it's all about this um, beautiful king who, he's very powerful, all the kings of the earth respect him, but he uses his power and his authority to serve to serve the poor. And I remember in my prayer time, all of a sudden this sort of question popped into my head. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but- All the all time. The, you have voices in your head all the time, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But um, you know, this question popped into my head and it was, um, why do I have a job? Why is it that every morning I wake up and literally at that point I would open up my front door and there would be a lineup of needy people outside the door uh, with starving children, with desperate needs, looking for jobs. And, um, and the obvious hit me that the reason why everywhere I looked in Liberia there were children without arms and legs and without a sense of peace or hope or, or security for the future was because there were people in positions of influence and authority who didn't have compassion in mm. their heart and didn't have righteousness in their heart and, and didn't have godliness in their heart. And uh, the obvious hit me, and it was that I could spend my whole life picking up children one at a time, which would be amazing, you know, like instant gratification. Uh, or I could come back to Canada and I could labor uh, to see godly people in places of influence and to see the church even become a godly influence in Canada and literally help liberate multitudes of children all, all at once by being a voice for the voiceless. And, so and that's an important paradigm shift, isn't mm -hmm. it? Isn't it? And I mean, not everyone may be called to, to, to this specific thing, but you were called to it, weren't you? That was a specific thing God said, Fatine, I want you to go and do this. Yeah, and I think it's a both end. I think we always have to be willing to stop for the one, you know, at the grocery store or Africa, wherever there's yeah. a person in need. But we also can't pull out of the places of influence in our nation, out of media, like what we're doing today, out of getting involved um, at important times, pivotal times, like our election this year. Because truly, uh, as David Maines said to me once, the nation goes to those who show up. And the decisions that are being made by our leaders and the people of influence in Canada literally affect multitudes of children, um, elderly, you know, the poor. So it's critical that we're involved. Okay, let's talk about this show because you've been doing this show now for a couple of years here in your uh, beautiful white uh, At the wonderland here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so you've had people from all kinds of different stripes and all kinds of different passions come through. As you've interviewed them, what are the things that have popped out to you that go, these are the critical issues that we need to be focusing on in our country? You know, there's so many. I have to admit, I instinctively, I default to the social justice issues you know so I love talking about stuff like human trafficking with Joy Smith or the abortion issue is really dear to my heart especially as a woman and a mother and uh, but the one that really rocked me over this past year was a show I did with Christine Van Gein mm -hmm. on the federal debt and taxes and when I realized that the average Canadian has like 30 Five to 55 percent of our income going out the door to taxes and government fees every year accumulated throughout the year and I began to realize that we're paying 80 million dollars a day to the federal debt and I began to think like what you know what could we do with 80 million dollars a day it could keep somebody up at night couldn't it yeah for <laughs> yeah. the poor and I think about that clip with Justin Trudeau where he addressed that vet in Alberta where he said you know the reason we can't give you the money that you're asking for is because we don't have it and yet we're giving 1.4 billion dollars to the funding of abortion internationally and I realized that fiscal stewardship of our nation is actually a justice issue a righteousness issue and that this is something that as believers uh, if we're going to care about the poor we also need to care about the fiscal management of our nation because it enables us to feed the poor so election year yep. it's, it's coming how do yep. you see this rolling out how do I see this rolling out? Dave for Prime Minister. <laughs> Anything can happen. We got like, what? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, actually not. <laughs> you would be an amazing Prime Minister. But, um, you know, I, I really think we're at a pivotal time in our nation. Obviously, politics is becoming more and more polarizing, it seems. Uh, you look at the Liberal Party, and it's like the, the uh, Liberal Party of 10 years ago doesn't even exist today. You could say the same thing about the Conservative Party. Like, everything has just been shifting um, right off the edge of, of the left. And I think 
think if people who have traditional values don't get involved now, uh, we might not have an opportunity to get involved because things, um, you know, especially in the area of freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, uh, the voice of traditional values is being crushed, uh, you know, in, in many different ways across our nation. And so this is the moment where we need to get involved. It's a critical, critical election, which is why I wanted to do this show. So I could just kind of go off a little bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about this as we go on in the show, but and we're going to see a clip of this in just a second, but every vote matters, doesn't it? It really does. It really honestly does. It does it's not a cliche. It's a legitimate, on-the-ground, grass tax thing. Yeah, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, uh, one of my friends actually ran for the nomination of a lead party in a constituency, and she lost by 11 votes. Where just up the road, there was a whole bunch of people that had the same values that she has, that literally hundreds of them at a conference. And literally one or two rows in that conference could have been the game changer for that one election. So I think we need to really understand that we never know if we might be one of those 11 votes that shifts an entire election. You said in the opener that you didn't use to vote the voting age was a thing I was most looking forward to when I was a kid. I was a bit of a political junkie too. Oh. But I'll tell you, <laughs> votes matter, and we're going to take a look at a clip yep. talking about just how much votes matter in just a second. This is the Fate Teen Show. We're having a blast talking about national elections today. Votes really do swing issues and nations one way or another, don't they? We can make a huge impact if we just get involved. We've actually started a 24-7 prayer wall to pray for godly government in 2019. Through The Faith Teen Show, we're tackling issues influencing our nation's future, like freedom of conscience, racism, poverty, the debt, human trafficking, abortion, democracy, and much more. If you missed a show, you can watch anytime at Fateen.tv or on YouTube. We hope to see you there. We love Canada, and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fateen.tv or call 613-552-5572 to donate today. You know the scripture. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sins. Then I will heal their land. That is why believers from sea to sea are gathering in our nation's capital on October the 12th, 2019, just prior to our next election, to pray for godly leaders to be elected in Canada. Now is the time to cry out for our nation like never before. If we will, then he will. Join with us. Find out more at www.thecrymovement.com. It's not a concert. It's not a conference. It's a cry. Okay, so will you be voting in the upcoming election? No. I have no idea what's going on with the election. Oh, I'm going to vote, but only because I don't want to feel like I didn't make, it, make an effort. What a joke that is. No, I won't. Uh, yeah, probably. I'm not sure, though. Don't know enough. Yes. Um, because I've realized as I've gotten older that my vote actually makes a difference, and so I need to vote. No, no. Why is that? Just don't Just vote. not. Yes. Because I can. Yes. It's, it's a nice it's a nice thing to have, you know, the choice to vote. A lot of people don't have that, so. Democracy, right?
Wow. Votes mean something. Absolutely. Votes really do swing issues and nations one way or another, don't they? Absolutely, absolutely. And even that word democracy, right? We live in a democracy, which the breakdown of that word means uh, the people rule. We've actually shown that video before on the show, and I wanted to show it again because it just illustrates how two volunteers, you know, would have been the game changer in that first election and how much we can make a huge impact if we just get involved. I mean, I, I, I volunteer on every election that I can get my fingers on on the, on the local level. And when I met you, one of the things that very much impressed me, and I, what I've come to understand, this is how you, how you think, is that prayer and action are a double-sided coin. You need to be able to have prayer, but you can't just have prayer. You need to be able to have action as well. So prayer, tell me about prayer for this national election. What's going on when it comes to prayer for our nation? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to say this, actually, as you were sharing there, I was reminded of a story one time I was speaking before the Justice Committee on the issue of raising the age of sexual consent. And, you know, it was a very practical, hands-on. It wasn't a prayer meeting. I was before the Justice meeting being a boy. It's like interceding. <laughs> as with, far from a prayer meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I remember uh, after that time, I was just kind of meditating on what I had just been through and um, felt the Lord speak this word of wisdom into my heart about, about prayer and action. He said, Fatine, if my son would have stopped at the place of prayer, if he would have stopped at the Garden of Gethsemane, mm. Gethsemane, excuse me, and never gotten up and actually gone to the cross, you know, and been a real man with real nails going through real hands and real pain and real embarrassment and real humiliation and real sacrifice, if he would have stopped at the place of prayer, you know, there would be no way of, of salvation, well, yeah. right? And it made me realize, wow, if this is how Jesus did it, is this, if this is how he changed things, you know, then how do we think we're going to get away mm. with just doing one or just doing the other, right? We have to start so at the place of prayer. You know, he went to the mountain to meet with the Father, and then he went to the masses, right, to feed them and to teach them. And so, um, yeah, so let's start with prayer, prayer, okay? So things that people can do yeah. uh, between now and the federal election. Uh, number one, we've actually started a 24-7 prayer wall to pray for godly government in 2019. It's on the justice wall. Uh, it's a, a specific calendar just to praying for a uh, godly government. And people can sign up for a 15 minute prayer slot. That's the minimum uh, once a week. So super easy. You could do it. Well, you take a long, hot shower. You know what I mean? Pray for godly government, <laughs> however you want to do it. It's a great place to pray. <laughs> there you go. And so people can sign up right there. And you know, I have a dream, Dave. You know, what would happen if all across Canada, people sign up and just fill those slots and we had 24 7 prayer for godly government in 2019 in this day and age there's no reason why this couldn't happen i know i know and i think we just might get more godly government in 2019 if we did that and mm. so i want to obviously invite people to sign up to that again it's justicewall.com um, but there are also several prayer events that are happening and i believe in the power of prayer you know i remember one cry that we did in 2008 and actually what i'm about to share with you has happened at a few different cries and the cry is a full day prayer meeting where we come together, usually for somewhere between five and 12 hours, depending on how long we can get our venue for. Uh, <laughs> and we just pray and fast and humble ourselves, seek his face. And, you know, on the day of the cry in 2008, I'll never, never forget on the political polls, even though we weren't just praying for government, we were praying for revival, for unity, a lot of different things. Literally, one of the parties began to shoot up in the polls. Another one of the parties began to plummet. Um, a, a federal election was called after that shift we went to the polls that year and um, and it was an incredible shift you know that happened that year and that to me was a real indication of the power of these times when we actually come together as the body of Christ. And so just to rattle off a few opportunities that people have to come together with other believers to pray and fast. Uh, the cry is going to be happening October the 12th. We're going to be gathering at the War Memorial Museum. It's going to be amazing wow. in Ottawa. It's uh. going to be absolutely epic uh, right there about a week and a half before the election. Or There's the Battle for Canada. St. John is coming up. And also Pray Canada, our good friend uh, Tim Schindel, right? Mm. He's going to be mobilizing churches across Canada Canada to come together in their own churches to pray um, right before the election. So if uh, if all of that was too hard to keep track of, we actually have a website. It's called Unite for Canada 2019, where we're going to be listing out, it's already there, listing out all the things that people can get involved with in, the, in that side of the coin of praying for godly leadership in 2019. It's funny when you talk about this and you talk about things that shift. Some people might think that's spiritual language, but when you're in the middle of campaigns, 
things shift when you're in campaign war rooms and you go, I don't know what, sometimes you'll walk in and they go, I don't know what happened, but the polls are up today and the polls are down. And you go, what happened? Things shift, things shift. So, okay, we, we're, we're, we could talk forever, but talk about action. Action. Action's so important. Yeah, it is critical. Now, <laughs> this is a lot of fun because we've actually hired Jesus right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm not wow. even... Wow, yeah, you even find him on LinkedIn? Or, yeah, okay. exactly. Right. <laughs> I, we found a guy, his name is Jesus, uh, literally. He's a, he's a young African-Canadian man who's been working at Parliament for years, and he's actually going to be researching all the major swing ridings in Canada where the election could either go this way or that way. And then out of all the swing ridings, he's going to be researching for us uh, where there are godly candidates that could potentially get put in if that riding swung in their favor. And so we're literally doing the research for all this. We're going to be doing like up to the day analytics on this. And we're going to be releasing this information to people that want to get involved in supporting and serving godly candidates. In the two. Like I want to be one of those one or two volunteers mm. that makes a difference in a campaign for an individual that's going to bring forward a law on protecting seniors or on pornography, clamping down on that, or even on the issue of life or whatever it might be. And so we want to invite people again. They can go to uniteforcanada2019.ca and through the advocacy side of what we do, the My Canada Association, we're going to be communicating about these strategic string, swing ridings, excuse me, and the godly candidates within them. I want to work smarter, not harder. You know, I'm not interested in just burning out. I actually would like to see some progress here so how about you you, you are so, yes yes I agree I agree that's why I love hanging out with you I love the way you think and uh, you partner prayer and action but I do want to say something though like we're gonna be targeting these these strategic writings but I want to encourage and we're gonna be encouraging people to also get involved with godly candidates right in their own writing because when you get involved in um, nomination or when you get involved in election campaigns that's where you're building relationship with your future member of parliament and I've heard MPs say time and time again that after they get elected it's the people that really showed up for them in the moments where they needed help like at during the election campaign that they remember and that they take special effort to listen to after they're elected. And as someone that's gotten to know some of our different uh, elected officials, they also need care because the attacks that come at them can be significant. And yeah. so when you go and you serve and you bless and you love and you support and you knock on doors, all of a sudden you earn the right to be, uh, to be heard in their life. Yeah. Hey, teen, we're almost out of time on your own darn show. I know, I talk How so much. That? I talk so much. <laughs> really, really fantastic. <laughs> Thanks so much for having oh. me as a guest host on the Fate Teen Show. Your guest has been Faye Teen, and this has been a blast. This is an election year. It's so important to be able to get involved in lots of different ways. We're gonna be right back after this with more great stuff on the Faye Teen Show. Hi, I'm Dave Carroll. When I was a kid and I finally got to the voting age, I was thrilled. That was the age I wanted to be so that I could vote for the people that I wanted to vote for. We'd go away on family vacations and I would sneak away from vacations to read newspapers. For whatever reason, politics has always sort of been in my blood. When I got to voting age, I found ways to be able to get involved in local elections and in the last number of years, been able to volunteer on different campaigns. Some people say that voting doesn't matter. Voting absolutely matters. I've seen hours before elections actually happened, knocking on doors going, hey, have you voted yet? And they said, is that election today? And we said, yep, you better go vote. It actually makes a legitimate difference when you volunteer on campaigns. Some people say, is one, does one vote actually do anything? Does volunteering in a campaign actually do something? I've been in local candidates' communication departments where because we were able to speak a voice of positivity and blessing instead of critique and negative, we've swung the entire feel and the entire tone of elections down the positive route instead of the negative route, and we've been able to share God's love in that practical way. I'll tell you something else. Politicians are real people. And when you go and you support them, they have real families, they have real needs. They get attacked sometimes worse than even pastors do, believe it or not. When you go and you support your local leader, a politician, and you say, I'm there for you, I'll be there for you, let me pray for you. There are lots of times where doors open up to be able to show God's love, to be able to care for people after elections are done. I'll give you another secret. On election night, I go to every single political celebration party in my city. I go to the Conservative Party. I go to the Liberal Party. I go to the NDP Party. 
I go to the Green Party and I shake their hand at the end of it because putting your name into the political arena is there's a cost to it. It's not easy. I shake their hand and I say, you did a great job. And if you ever need somebody to be able to care for you, let me know. That opens up amazing doors. I'm telling you something. This federal election, there's an opportunity for you to take who you are and what your passions are and put it right on the streets of your local town. The people that are running in your city need you. You can make a legitimate difference. Things can sway nationally. Things can sway locally. But if you're a pastor or you're a compassionate person and really just care about the individual, I'm telling you something, that makes an enormous difference too. Don't let this federal election go by without saying, how can I help? There's lots of ways. Thank you so much for joining Dave and I today. You know, we love Canada, and this is such a critical time in our nation. That's why it means so much to us to be able to come to you every week to talk about the issues shaping our nation and how together we can build a better Canada for the future. We can't stay at it without help, though. As a nonprofit program, we are 100% dependent on the generous donations of people like you who care about our national future. So we'd like to invite you to join the team by signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. For those that sign up to partner for $50 a month or more, we will send you a free copy of the amazing book created by Canadian Bible Society called Tracings of the Canadian Soul, which beautifully details scriptures set in stone throughout the Parliament of Canada. Canada. To sign up to partner, visit www.fayteen.tv or call 613-552-5572 today. Every gift makes a real difference. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. And God bless Canada.